is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show. Here, all right, we ready. Manny Navarro, the man, the myth, the legend. Follow him on Twitter at Manny underscore Navarro. You're at an airport, right? That's why you're masked up. Is Pretty that much. What? Yeah, I'm in Charlotte waiting for uh, my flight to Pitt, uh, to Pittsburgh. Okay. All right. Good stuff. Uh, Pitt to see uh, Pickett. All right. I like it. I like it. I like it. Um, this week, uh, did you did you pick up that maybe the team got a little bit of confidence from their win this past week? I'm That's what I'm hoping. I'm hoping that this is kind of a ball that maybe starts to roll a little bit. I know I'm getting ahead of myself because it's, it's just one win and all that stuff, but Man, I, I, I was really impressed with what they did last week. I'm not saying they're a good team or anything, but, you know, I would like to see a nice effort against a really good quarterback this week. Yeah, I think uh, I think there's definitely a lot of confidence. I think Tyler Van Dyke did that, you know, with uh, kind of talking the talk and walking the walk against NC State and, um, and, and playing well. I mean, four touchdowns, no interceptions, and – really looking like a guy who could read defenses a lot better than he did his first two games. I mean, he was making smart decisions with the ball. And it was a good NC State defense. That was the number one third down defense in the country. And I thought he did a really good job whenever they turned up the heat on him of finding open guys and making the right decisions. So I think as long as Tyler Van Dyke plays at, at that kind of a level, oh, I think I think they've got a shot to win this game. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm with you there, man. I mean, it's just it's a matter of does Miami have a defense that can force Pickett into something he doesn't do? Mistakes. Yeah, and I mean, one that, interception that, all year. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's the key to me that I see there. Can they shut the running game down so he doesn't have an option? And two, can they force him into a couple of mistakes? If they can't force him into mistakes, they've got to find a way to shut down that offense. That's not going to be easy. Right, and we don't know what the situation is with uh, his leading receiver, uh, Russell, and uh, Jordan, rather Jordan Addison, and, and then uh, um, I think his, his number one running back also. Both of those guys are coming back from concussion. I don't know if they've been ruled out for the game yet or not, um, but I know that during the week that was some of the conversation. So they might be limited with some of the guys, one of the, some of their lead guys as far as his weapons, you know. Um, you know, the one thing you got to say about Pittsburgh is, you know, they, they really haven't played that tough of a schedule. Yes, they beat Clemson last week, but their losses to Western Michigan. So this isn't an unbeatable team by any stretch of the imagination. Yes, they're ranked. Yes, they're probably the best team in the ACC. I think they're probably better than Wake Forest. But I still think they're very beatable. And if he's going to be short two of his weapons, you know, it's just a matter of, of, of putting them on the ground, sacking and putting some pressure on them and not letting them get comfortable. Oh, I mean, you go back and you look at when, you know, Miami's won the last three games against Pittsburgh. The sack numbers, um, you know, I think were six, four, and three in those three wins against Pittsburgh. They obviously Pickett didn't play against them last year, but the quarterback they put in there, they put pressure on him. That's why they only allowed one touchdown in that game. So uh, it's going to be that. And, and you know, last week against NC State, Miami had one sack and three tackles for loss. They, instead of being uber aggressive, they kind of just stayed in their lanes right. and made tackles, and it was enough to get the win. So I don't know if that's the formula again this week or not. Maybe they can do. They can. They can beat Pickett without putting pressure on him and just doing a good job covering up on the outside. Ooh, I don't know. I don't uh, No, I, I don't like that because I, I think good quarterbacks, if you don't put pressure on them, Manny, they kill you, dude. I, I think, think you got a surprise. I think I think it can't be just, hey, we're just going to blitz on third down. No, no, no. It's got to gotta be something me. unique. It's going to have to be something unique. And I'll tell you this, Marcus Clark, he, he, you know, he got his first start last week, played his real first action. I thought he looked really, really good. I know Manny Diaz was encouraged by him. So now they kind of have another cornerback to sort of team up with Tyreek Stevenson. You know, DJ Ivy was kind of a disaster all season long. Gervin Hall, when they put him in the slot, just not a good. So, But I think now they've got a guy who's a little bit more consistent. And Marcus Clark got a lot of confidence last week. So we'll see. Um, you know, I give the Canes a shot, man. They've won three in a row against Pitt. For whatever reason, Manny Diaz's defenses show up against Pitt year after year after year. And they'll have to show up again uh, tomorrow if they're going to have any shot. Yeah, no, I'm with you. I, I just think you have to pressure him. You have to find a way to make him uncomfortable. That kid can slink. Have you watched him? Like, oh, I know absolutely. We, I know we watched him, like, early in his career beat Miami, but, I mean, you watch him this year. Dude, he's a – Well, first of all – Since Marino, that's the best passer they've had. Put it that way. Yeah, you could definitely argue that. Um, I, I think, um, you know, 
one thing is teams aren't putting pressure on him. Their offensive line is doing a good job. I think he's only getting pressured on 27% of his dropbacks, which is tops in the ACC. And even when he gets pressured, though, according to the pro football focus numbers, he's like number one or two in the country when they do put pressure on him in terms of wow. completion percentage. And I think he's got like, I don't know, eight touchdowns under pressure, no interceptions. I mean, so Grant, he's, a smart, he's, still, so he's a smart kid too. Yeah, he's really – so that's why I don't know if, if necessarily bringing the house. I mean – I thought Miami was less aggressive last week against NC State. They kept yeah. guys at home, and it worked for them. They didn't miss as many tackles. They gang tackled more. Maybe that's the approach you take at points. Maybe it's just a mix of it to, to get him uncomfortable. Yeah, and, I, you know, I think in a game like this, dude, the rooster is going to be amazing. You, yeah. you need to feed the rooster and feed him a lot. Yeah. Run that some bitch into the ground. Keep pick it off the field. Give him less possessions. Well, and now again, it's up to the O line to be able to do their job and all of that. Plus, if you start getting that running game going, Tyler's going to be even better than than what we've seen already from from Van Dyke. So, to me, this is the kind of game that I want the Rooster running like crazy. Well, I, I like the Rooster in space, and I like the way that they utilize him in the backfield. Um, and the one thing about him is he is five, whatever, five ten, five eleven, one hundred ninety pounds. He's not, you know, two hundred ten pounds where you're gonna you're gonna beat him into submission. They kind of saved him last week, I thought, until the third or fourth quarter when they needed him. They threw him the pa some passes early, but they went he pass heavy against NC State early, and I could see them doing the same type of thing again. Like, okay, if we're in the ball game, we make sure we get this this guy in space when we need him, so he can pick yeah. up first downs and make big plays. So um, I, I'd like to see them actually use Cody Brown and Thad Franklin a little more. Both of those freshmen are big physical guys. Okay. Uh, Franklin, I thought, looked really, really good against uh, Central Connecticut State. You don't have to make it very complicated for these freshmen, man. Just, hey, hit the hole and go, right? That you just, <laughs> that's what you got to tell them to do. You don't put them in pass protection. You, you, you let Jalen play those pass protection downs. But I think you can trust Cody Brown. Look, the one thing that's going to happen in this game, it's, it's rainy as hell up in Pittsburgh right now. Um, and I think it's going to be rainy and cold tomorrow, too, in the 50s. You're going to need good um, ball protection in this game. That's going to be key. Um, and, yes, Rooster is the best running back that they've got, but I trust those two freshmen. I think they can make plays for you. I think you can run you can run the ball with them. And, and I didn't think they really utilized them that much last week. No, I'm with you, man. Uh, Manny, uh, by the way, make sure you subscribe over to The Athletics. So you can catch Manny's coverage and follow him on Twitter at Manny underscore Navarro. So what's the prediction, my brother? Do uh, do the Canes, can they make it two in a row, please? I'd like to see it, oh, but I I think this Pitt team, you know, for whatever reason, they've just got it rolling. Um, I, I think this is a tough ask to go on the road and win here against this quarterback. Whenever you go up against elite quarterbacks, you know, and you got two freshman safety, I think Miami's going to be in the game. I just think Pitt's going to find a way to win because they're at home and this is their season. This is their year, it looks like. Um, I'm picking Pitt 28-21. This kid's a first-round pick, right, in your eyes? Yeah. In fact, Jerry DePala, who works for the Pittsburgh Tribune Review, I had him on my podcast this week. Um, he's been covering Pitt forever. Um, was saying, I think Kuiper has him as, as his top quarterback right now. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it's just – I think it's just a tough assignment. I think Miami could very well win its last four games. Um very winnable opponents, all four of them. And I think, you know, six and six, five, seven and five. I think this is a bowl team. Oh, I don't think this is a team that's going to finish less than 500 with Tyler Van Dyke playing the way he is. Let's hope so, my brother. Let's hope so. Safe travels. I appreciate you taking some time, as always, my man. Look Anytime. forward to the game tomorrow, man. Should be a lot yep. of fun. Should be able to see two good young quarterbacks. I think that's that's pretty cool, man. Pretty yeah. cool stuff. Absolutely. Like and, and, and those two freshman safeties uh, – Cam Kitchens and James Williams. I, I'm hoping, you know, this is this could be a breakout game for him. Just uh, be good uh, or be happy that you're not covering the the mess that the Dolphins are in or the, the Panther uh, Quinville situation, you know, that kind of stuff. Or, yeah. or maybe a, a soccer team that likes to cheat and uh, get extra international <laughs> players, you know. So, uh, you know, you've you've avoided those controversies on your beat. So, yeah, I to you, sir. Yeah, I could just have a coaching search and an AD search. Who knows? That, but that's, that, that may not be till, till the end of the season. So I got to count my blessings. Let's go. All right, <laughs> All right Manny. Man, you man. be good, my brother. We'll catch up next week. You too, man. I'll see you. All you right. You got it. There you go. The great Manny Navarro. We love him. And he's out in pit, ready to cover the team, taking on the Pitt Panthers.